kind Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for being such a good God to us. You made ways out of no ways. You've opened doors that we didn't see how they were going to be open. Every time we turn around, we can't help but testify. You've blessed us over and over again. And for that, we want to say thank you. Now, God, it is preaching time. And this morning, Lord, I need a special anointing that will allow preaching to be easy and will allow your word to be received into the hearts and minds of all that would be willing to hear and receive it. Speak now to your servant, that your servant will speak to your people with clarity. And I'll give you glory always. In Jesus' name, amen. From Paul's first letter to the Thessalonian church, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Anybody know that to be the truth? Have we trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere blessed savior you're still my refuge by my mind so I'll take it to the Lord in prayer oh yeah. What peace we often forfeit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, what needless pains we bear. It's all because we do not carry everything to God in sweet hour mm. a prayer sweet hour a prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids I wish I had somebody me at thy father's throne makes all Lord have mercy my wants and we shares no. Now I need about five folk who know it to be true. In seasons, uh, seasons of distress and grief, my, my soul has all done found relief and all Lord have mercy escape the tender snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer so when peace Lord have mercy like a river if I got some church folk in here 
attendeth my way when sorrow like sea billows roll whatever my lot can I get somebody thou hast taught me to say it is well yes it is well with my soul it is well it is well lord have mercy with my soul with my Oh, it is well, it is well with my soul. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! It is well. It is well with my soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. My, 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 my. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to look at somebody right quick and tell them, neighbor, if it's not all right, you better hold on for a little while because I got a feeling everything going to be all right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You may have to cry right now, but you better learn. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, joy is coming in the morning. It's coming in the morning. And you ought to give somebody a high five huh? and tell them, I feel the morning coming. Huh? I feel the morning coming. Huh? Glory, glory. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? I got to lay huh? my burden down. Woo! Lord, have mercy. And there's about five of y'all in here. I just need to go ahead and tell you, stop looking at what they're going to say. Stop worrying about what they're going to say. Just don't worry about how they look at you. And go ahead and get your praise on uh, because you know already uh, you got the victory. Uh, go ahead and praise him. Uh, you got the victory. Uh, go ahead and give him glory. Uh, you got the victory. Uh, celebrate it. Uh, celebrate it. Uh, celebrate it. God in here. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in here. Hello. Glory, 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 glory.
give me a good 15 minutes and you can dance a little bit more or you can go ahead and do it now Have mercy. All right. Look here, look here, look here, look here. Now listen, I got a word and it's not going to take me long to put it out there. But I need to ask about 50 of y'all in here. If you knew at your next praise everything that has been stressing you has been frustrating you has been getting on your nerves god was gonna step in and work that thing out i wonder how hard you would praise i i i just wonder how hard you would praise if you knew at your next praise every bill that's been stressing you is not gonna stress you anymore i i wonder if at your next praise you knew everything you asked god to do it was going to be done well i just want to tell you you don't have to wait till it happens uh, go ahead and just act like it's already done just just bless him like it's already fixed just give him praise like he's already worked it out uh, just go ahead and thank him uh, thank him uh, thank him hallelujah glory glory Woo! thank you jesus be the glory to God, Lord have mercy, be the glory, to God, be the glory, Thessalonians chapter number five. Y'all, please give me 15 minutes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. First Thessalonians five, beginning in verse 16. And there these words are recorded. Rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesyings prove all things Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and 
soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stopping at verse 23, that is what your Bible says. Pray for me because I feel something in this room. My God, I feel glory in here. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. I want to preach for a few minutes, just a few, because I got a feeling the Lord is just going to take over in here. It's not going to take long. Let me see if I can preach from the thought, lessons I learned from my father. Lessons I learned from my father. Now, let me be honest and let me be transparent. If you hadn't figured it out yet, I loved my dad. My daddy was my hero. Great preacher of the gospel. I, I tell anybody, if you really wanted to hear a preacher, you should have heard my dad. My dad was some kind of preacher. But there was something about him that separated him from the role of preacher pastor that made him special to me. That was before he was a preacher and before he was a pastor. He was, first of all, my dad. He was my protector. He was my provider. He loved me when I was right and went upside my head. Y'all will catch it later. He was one that carried a quiet spirit. You never really knew what he was thinking until he opened his mouth and began to speak. And when he would speak, he would speak with such wisdom that he would leave you spellbound wondering, did I just get cussed out politely? That was my dad. But daddy had a saying that he always shared with us as children and even the more with those who called him pastor. Dad always said, follow me as I follow Christ. And then he said, when I stop following Christ, you will have every reason in the world to stop following me. Now, I would not insult your intelligence today and I don't want you to think that I've come to talk about my daddy because all of us in one way or another have had some man or some male figure in our lives who has made an impact on us. Whether it was a father or an uncle or a big brother, whoever it was, all of us are who we are today because somebody helped to mold and to shape us for who we are. Have our witness here. Now, and do we all share a commonality today in understanding that while all of us may have had different earthly fathers, we can all celebrate the fact that we all have the same heavenly father. Yeah, y'all don't want to talk to me. I need somebody to talk back to me. Somebody in here who can say that even on Father's Day, uh, even if your father has made the transition from this world to the great beyond, uh, you can still celebrate the fact that you have a father who cares enough about you to look out for you. Uh, you've got a father that loves you enough to take care of you. Have I got somebody in here like that uh, who can testify? that when everybody else walks off and leaves you you have a father that cares about you so much so that he wakes you up every morning closes you with your right mind gives you a reasonable portion of health and strength and still gives you enough mind to keep going no matter how crazy you seem to act can I get a witness here anybody want to testify that you're glad that you got a father like that because while 
I have talked about my daddy. It's not my daddy that I've come to talk to. It's not my daddy that I've come to preach about this morning. It's not Vernon Worthy that I've come to expound on. I've come to talk about the God who loved me enough to give his only son. And son, my big brother, have I got some help, loved me enough to give his life. Have I got somebody? Anybody with me now realizing now that if we're really going celebrate Father's Day let's celebrate the one that made it all possible because without him, have I got some help here there would be no father Yeah, that's the word that I've come to share with us today. That's the message I didn't come because most times uh, when we have Father's Day, folks take this as an opportunity to talk on, talk about everything the man is not doing. Uh, That ain't today. That's not what we've come for today. I've come to celebrate those uh, who are still trying uh, to do the right thing. Have I got somebody in here? Uh, Anybody want to help me celebrate a daddy uh, that will love you beyond uh, your mistakes? Anybody want to help Help me celebrate a father that will love you past your failure. Anybody want to help me celebrate the fact that you got a father that when your mother and father forsake you, that daddy will pick you up, hold you together, and tell you everything. I wish I had somebody who will holler at me right quick because you know when everybody else walks off and leaves you by yourself, daddy will whisper in your ear, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. Yeah, that's the daddy I want to talk about. And and that daddy, I tell you, was a master teacher. He taught me some things, Brother Washington. He taught me some things, even in his word. And in this text from Paul to the Thessalonian church here, he gives some simple instructions to the church that I believe almost sounds like a father giving advice to his children. It it just almost seems like, because in the earlier chapter of this first letter of Thessalonians, Paul tells the church, I believe it's in chapter 2, matter of fact, where Paul tells the church that I'm spending time with you, talking with you, and walking before you, much like a father would do his children. Well, that said to me, brothers and sisters, that if a man is going to give me advice, he's also willing to live the advice that he get. Y'all ain't said nothing. Y'all, y'all didn't catch it. Can I say it one more time? It's one thing to talk it but it's something else to live it have I got a witness up in here so here I see in this text where Paul speaks to the Thessalonian church and he gives me some lessons there's some lessons here that I've learned would y'all like to know what the lessons are I'd be glad to tell you there are about four lessons here that he tells me the first lesson that he tells me is this the first lesson from my father is is I've got to be able to play hard Look at somebody and tell them you got to play hard, you got to play hard, you got to play. I said play, P-L-A-Y. The first thing that he tells me in the text uh, is that I've got to rejoice uh, ever more. Now, uh, the word rejoice in the Greek uh, simply means uh, to be happy, uh, to speak well of, uh, to enjoy uh, what the Lord has blessed you to have. Uh, Never in my life have I seen so many folk uh, who walk around looking like they have been sucking lemons. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. Uh, I wish I had about 20 folk to holler at me. Uh, Nobody wants to be around somebody uh, who's always a sour puss. Uh, Always talking Lord God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, Always crying. Always complaining. Uh, Always mumbling. Always grumbling. Uh, Always talking about nobody know the trouble I've seen. Uh, Sweetheart, I don't want to know the trouble. Uh, What I want to know is, can you you thank God uh, in the midst of the trouble. My God, uh, is there anybody up in here uh, who can say in the midst of what I've gone through, uh, I still know how to put a smile on my face. Uh, I still learn how to enjoy life. Uh, I still learn how to say if God be for me, uh, who can be against me? I've still learned uh, to say this is the that my dad 
that it has made and I'm going to rejoice I may be broke but I'm going to rejoice I might be sick but I'm going to rejoice I might be in trouble but I'm going to rejoice and I got somebody in here today that can say in order to celebrate life you got to learn how to live life happy stop crying over spilt milk and get a towel wipe it up go get some more and keep on moving So daddy tells me I got to play hard. Uh huh. But then the second thing he tells me is not only must I play hard, but I got to pray hard. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I'll just go ahead and put two and two together. And some of y'all will say amen like you know it's the truth. In order to play hard, sometimes you have to pray hard. Because if you don't pray hard enough, some folk will try to steal your joy. Woo, can I preach like I feel it up in here, Butch? Huh? If you ain't careful, you'll get hooked up around somebody huh, who always talking about what's wrong. Lord Jesus, my back hurting. Lord, my heart, my head hurting. God, I ain't got no money. Lord, this one tree, I ain't got time to hear that. What I need is somebody around me huh, who can say, you know what? It might not be how I want it to be, huh, but I can show, thank God, it ain't what it was. Huh? Come on, somebody. Anybody want to holler at me right quick? I can say it may not be what it ought to be, but I thank God it's not what it used to be. Anybody want to holler at me real quick? I was shackled by a heavy burden. I was beneath a load of guilt and shame, but guess your heart, the hand of Jesus, touched me. Anybody glad the man touched you? Some folk ought to be glad he touched you, because if he hadn't touched you, you'd be going off on somebody. Huh? If he hadn't touched you, you walk around with a pity party. Huh? If you hadn't touched you, you'd be sitting around talking about, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Huh? But when he's touched you, huh? you can get on your knees and say, Father, I stretch huh? my hand to thee. No other help I know. Huh? If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, weather. Watch Paul in the text. Paul tells me in the text, verse there, verse 17, he tells me, first word in verse 17, he says, I got to pray. But that's not the piece that gets the attention. The piece that gets the attention in verse 17 is he says, uh, we've got to pray without ceasing. In other words, whatever comes in life, don't stop praying. Come on, somebody. See, after all, the devil will throw stuff at you to distract your prayer life. I wish I had somebody to talk with me. Is it just me or is it just the scene like when I get ready to read the word, the phone rings. Folk just come knocking at the door. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, don't you get sleepy? It just seems like every time you open the Bible. Come on, somebody. Let's tell the truth. Oh, but when it's prayer time, same thing, same situation. Here comes somebody wanting to gossip when you want to pray. And I need to tell somebody right quick, don't y'all get mad at me, but somebody holler like you know it's the truth. If you really want to shut some gossipers up, uh, when they start talking, say, well, come on here, let's pray about that thing. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Come on, let's pray about it. Well, you know so-and-so and so, well, come on, let's pray about so-and-so and so. I'm trying to tell some of us, you'll kill some of the negativity in your life uh, when you learn how to pray some of them negative spirits uh, or if my people God help uh, who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then uh, will I hear from heaven forgive sins uh, and heal the land would you please look at somebody and tell them pray hard pray hard pray hard pray hard but then there's another one in this text the third lesson I learned from my daddy is I got to play hard, I got to pray hard, but then thirdly he tells me I got to work hard. After all, if you don't work hard, you can't play hard. I'm in the book. The book said if you don't work, you don't eat. Hello? And 
you sure ain't gonna be happy. Reverend White and I were talking about this in the office earlier. We were talking about the passage where Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to Peter, well, Jesus, uh, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. There's a reason why Jesus told him to feed the sheep. The reason why he told Peter to feed the sheep was because he knew if the sheep didn't get fed, they were going to get hungry. Now watch this, watch this. I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. You know how you act when you get hungry. Am I talking right, Reverend? We get cranky. We get evil. Hello, somebody. We be ready to cuss folks out. Some of them ain't done nothing to us and we don't give them the evil look like I wish you would. Well, can I let you on a little secret? It's no different spiritually. You get somebody who's been spiritually malnourished, someone who has not been spiritually fed, they will be spiritually cranky. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, they will be evil. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. They will bless you out right up in your face and act like they ain't done nothing. So you got to work hard. I'm still in the text. In verse 19, he tells me, quench not the spirit. In other words, don't put a chokehold on God working in your life. Don't ever get in the place where you have to say you got to have control. That's some of our problem right there. Many of us don't know how to relinquish control and just let God do what he wants to do. I, I live for the day. I'm just going to be honest, Deacon Dancy. I live for the day when St. James gets to a place where we just totally let go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of you are there, but some of you still got a way to go. When you get to the place where you just let go, I ain't worrying about what people say. I'm not worrying about how people look. I'm not worrying about what people think. I can't worry about how they talk about child that you see how so and so acted up in church today well let's just be honest uh, some folk don't know the hell some of us had to go through uh, to get to where we y'all ain't gonna talk to me today uh, somebody don't know the nights we had to cry uh, just to get here today can I get somebody uh, who can remember some of the low points in your life uh, where you can say God if you hadn't been there uh, I'd have lost my mind I'd have gone off on somebody I'd have killed somebody I would have took my own life but every time I turned around you kept making a way for me and so since you made a way the least I can do is enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with a praise I wish I had about 50 folk who ain't studying what anybody think when I think my God of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me excuse me while I give him the praise that he is due no don't quench the spirit don't despise prophesying don't let anybody stop what God is doing in your life and can I tell somebody right quick and in a hurry there are some folk that will testify that when you step back and let God handle some situations uh, he'll work stuff out for you so pretty uh, that the only thing you can do uh, is give glory and honor to the one uh, that made it possible have I got a witness up in here uh, the songwriter said why should I feel discouraged uh, why should the shadows come why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion uh, a constant friend is he uh, if his eye is on the sparrow uh, I know he got his eye on so I sing because I'm happy. Where y'all at in here? I sing because I'm free. I wave my hand because I'm free to do it. I'll holler because I'm free to do it. I'll run like Sister Maxine because I'm free to do it. Because somebody knows when he sets you free, you're no longer bound. There are no more chains on you. You can look back and say greater oh my god is he that is in me well there's one more thing that my daddy taught me daddy taught me I got to play hard daddy told me I had to pray hard daddy told me I had to work hard but then finally daddy told me I had to praise hard 
Now, some of y'all were looking for a place to holler. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. In verse 18, Paul says, in everything. Watch it now. Give thanks. Watch the text. Watch the text. This will blow your mind. Because did you not notice in verse 18, he said, in everything and not for everything. Come on, somebody. See, there are some moments in our lives that there is not reason to give thanks. But because he says in everything, it gives me notice that even when there isn't a reason, there is still a purpose. God, help me preach right here. God, that was deep. I just blessed myself. Because sometimes I got to learn how to thank him just because he's keeping me through those moments when I don't feel like giving him some praise. Oh, come on. Let's talk about it, St. James. Y'all don't want to be real with me. Can I have at least 20 real folk that will testify? There are some Sundays you don't even feel like coming. I guess that's why some of you don't show up. Hello. Uh, Jesus. My Helen told me a story once about a boy that was laying in his bed one Sunday morning. And his mother came in and said to him, get up. It's time to go to church. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. And the boy said, I don't want to go to church. I just don't want to go. And said, now you got to give me one good reason why uh, I got to go. And I just don't want to go. I don't feel like it. The folk don't like me. The folk talk about me. The folk hate me. I don't want to go. That's why I don't want to go. Mama looked back at the boy and said, I'm going to give you two reasons why you need to get up and make your way to church. Reason number one is you're 40 years old. The second reason why you need to get up and go to church is because you you're the pastor. Huh? Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Huh? There come some days in all of our lives huh? when we don't feel like it. Can I get a witness? Huh? Well, y'all don't want to talk. Let me talk about JT. Huh? There are some Sundays I don't feel like it. Huh? I don't even want to get up. Huh? Don't even want to put my clothes on. Huh? Let me lay in the bed and watch Bobby Jones. I'll be just fine. Huh? But then I start thinking about huh? how that man kept me when I couldn't keep myself. Huh? Then I start thinking about uh, the mess he delivered me from uh, then I start thinking about uh, how he preserved my life uh, then I start thinking about uh, how he let me live uh, when other folk left here uh, and then I got to say well uh, I guess I better get up from here uh, because he's been good to me uh, that's why I gotta praise him uh, because he's been good to me uh, he's opened doors for me uh, he's made way out of no way uh, is there any Anybody up in here huh, who can say, Pastor, sometimes huh, I just don't feel like it. Huh? But when I think about huh, how he makes ways for me, huh, he feeds me when I'm hungry, huh, clothes me when I'm naked, huh, give me joy unspeakable huh, and full of glory, huh, I'll enter into his gates huh, with thanksgiving. Huh, I'll enter into his court huh, with a praise huh, because I think about it, he died that I might live he was hung up for my hang ups but he got up so I could get up and tell the world I found a savior anybody in here gonna testify you found a savior ain't he sweet ain't he sweet ain't he sweet yeah He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. That's the lessons I learned from my father. He taught me that I got to find reason to rejoice. He taught me that I got to learn how to pray. He taught me that I got to work hard. Oh, but every now and again, I got to take a moment and give him some praise because he is who he is. Now, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence. I don't want to bore anybody to death. And I sure don't want to waste nobody's time. But I'm just wondering if I got anybody in here who can say, you know what? When I think about everything that the
the Father has done in my life, I need to take a minute and just say Happy Father's Day the right way. Ah, y'all ain't said nothing. How do I say Happy Father's Day the right way? I'm glad you asked. In the 107th Psalm, somewhere about verse 2, here's the way you say Happy Father's Day. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord has redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Don't y'all play with me in here, but give me at least 30 folk who know right quick, fast, and in a hurry that if he hadn't grabbed you, you'd have been messed up a long time ago. If he hadn't spared your life, you'd have killed somebody. If he hadn't grabbed your tongue, you'd have cussed somebody. But every time you feel like going there, he reminds you, haven't I been good to you? Haven't I made a way for you? Haven't I opened doors for you? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Yeah! I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The lessons my father taught me. I'm not going to lie to you. This day is always tough for me. It's always tough. Why? I miss my dad. Yes, I do. There are times in the last year I've sat back and said to myself, I wish he could see me now. I wish he could see. But every time I get low about it, my heavenly father whispers in my ear that if I'll stick closer to you than any brother, can you imagine what I'll do if you'll let me be your daddy? Come on, somebody. The lessons he taught me. He's my heavenly father. Why do you think Jesus told us when he taught the disciples how to pray? You begin every prayer with our father who art in heaven. Hallowed, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth, Lord have mercy, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not, come on somebody, into temptation, but deliver us from all that's evil. For thine, Lord, yours, Daddy, is the kingdom. Yours, Daddy, is the power. Yours, Daddy, is the glory. And can I share something with somebody that's going to encourage you? Don't you know that if he got it all, He's willing to share a piece of it with us. Because the Bible lets us know we are heirs with God. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So whatever daddy has, the day is going to come when he's going to share his inheritance with us. Don't you want to be a part of that? Don't you want to get your piece of what the Father has in store for you? Then today, beloved, I challenge you. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove everything to be true. And he said, if you'll do it, I'll be with you. He said, the God of peace will forever be with you. Doors of the church are open. There may be somebody here. I don't normally do this with Brother Wilbert. I want you to sing just a little bit of I Can't Even Walk Without You Holding My Hand. You're here today. You're not saved. You know you're not. You want to be and you need to be. You don't have a relationship with the Father. With the Father. And you want to get to know him today. You want to accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. I want to tell you how simple it is. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you shall be saved. If you're here today and you're saying, I know who he is, he's my Lord, he's my Savior, but I desire to become a part of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church, I want you to know you can come today as a candidate for baptism, Christian experience, restoration, letter transfer. Whoever you are, wherever you are, come right now. You're here and you're saying, I want to come, but I don't want to walk that aisle by myself. Listen, we understand. If you'll just lift your hand wherever you are, one of these brothers, one of these sisters here will meet you right where you are and take the walk with you. Will you come? This is your moment. This is your moment. I thought number one Say it, say it. Would surely be me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought I listen, listen, listen. could be. Will there be one that will come? I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be saved today. I want to commit my life to be. him. I want him to be my father. I thought and accept I me as his child. Come right now. He'll do it if you'll come. All I'm seeking sand. Yeah. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought. Listen. I could do a lot on my own. My, 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 my. I thought I could make it. Will there be one that'll come this morning? So all along, I thought of my. And the mighty big man uh-huh. But I can't even walk Without you holding my hand Lord, I can't Everyone this morning without you holding my hand, Lord, the mountain too high and the valley too down on. You know the Lord that I I'd learn to stand because I can even walk without you holding my hand. Everybody's standing, everybody's standing, everybody.